everybody, and welcome back to Cringe Confessional, the only show on the internet that wants to know the worst thing that's ever happened to you. My name is Cody, and we're back once again with more stories of the terrible and awful and most horrifying things. And probably a lot of stories of unrequited love and poopy pants. Hi, poop butt! Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to hear about the worst moment of your life. Getting pretty tired of poop stories, though. You and me both. Hopefully we don't encounter any of those tonight. Poop bot? That's basically all this is now. This is just a robot that tells stories about people pooping. This is so gross. This is a gross show. Alright, let's get started. When I was younger, I went to a birthday party at a roller ring. Cool. I had no idea how to skate, so I was just falling on my ass repeatedly. <laughs> cool. Eventually, I had to was go there to a the bathroom girl there? and just didn't take the skate. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, did you leave a trail like a slug? I think this person uh, took a dump and, and, and slowly drifted off the toilet and maybe didn't lock the door. <laughs> this is not my story. Don't stop. I didn't do this. This is not me. However, I do have a cringe story of me <laughs> at a roller rink. First, we gotta finish this. Eventually, I had to go to the bathroom and just didn't take the skates off. Yeah, what happened? Cue me struggling to stand in front of the urinal for two minutes, slipping and sliding the entire time. Oh, you peed. I <laughs> if you're still wearing the skates and you're peeing, you gotta, like, hug the urinal. You gotta wrap your arms around, like, the pipe. <laughs> You know what I mean? Oh, please don't tell me you fell. You better not have fallen. Eventually, I just pissed all <laughs> over myself and stumbled out the bathroom. Oh, God, dude. When I got out of the room, soggy! everyone turned and saw my soggy jeans. Oh, my God! I tried to leave without taking the skates <laughs> off and just fell in my picey jeans several more times. Oh, no. Oh, that shit was damp. Oh my god, also, hold on. I forgot about this part. Guys, Event it wasn't when just was like, it, it was a birthday party. This is full of people that he knows. These are kids he's gonna know for the rest of his life. How old were you? If you were like six, you're gonna grow up with these kids. You are fucked. Excellent story. Thanks for writing in. <laughs> hey, it wasn't a poop story. It was a pee story. That's not bad. Okay, here's my roller rink story. I have a scar on the top of my head. I don't know if you can see it. You see it right there? Like right here, okay? Uh, like I said, I used to go to the uh, to the roller rink every week. Every fucking week I would go there. And I would like really try to be cool by going as fast as possible. But one time, I was trying to transition off the roller rink to the arcade, okay? And I was going crazy fast. And normally it wouldn't be a problem, but somebody had spilled Sprite on the arcade floor. And I'm going crazy fast. And there's a ski ball machine in front of me. And I fall, and I st my body starts, instead of the skates going forward, my body starts turning, and I'm going head first into the roller, into the ski ball. And I bang my head on the ski ball machine. It, it goes, Goof! makes a loud noise, right? And uh, the music stops. Like, everybody in the roller rink is looking over at me now. And I feel no pain. Seriously. I think it's because I was going so fast. It's the adrenaline, like it's popping. I feel nothing. There's nothing wrong. But everybody's staring at me, and I'm like, what the, why is everybody looking at me? I'm fine. I'm okay. And I like put my hand up. And as I put my hand up, as it's going up, I feel something hit my hand. And I look down, and it's just dark red blood. Dark red. Like I hit a fucking artery in my head. <laughs> I don't know if that exists. Really bad blood. But the embarrassing part comes in that. Around this time, I was really in to the WWF. I was a big fan of professional wrestling. And Mankind was like the guy, right? He like would take these bumps and have a tooth going through his nose. I felt no pain. I felt like I was Mankind. I sat there while people were like trying to help me. Like the nurses and the people trying to like, you know... And I was, like, doing the Mankind thing where I'm, like, smiling, uh, acting unhinged. I'm pretending to be the Joker like I like the pain. I feel nothing. I enjoy it. Have a nice day! <laughs> Just this psychotic 10-year-old acting like a cool pro wrestler. Who is, a psych who is psychotic, by the way, in character? They probably thought I was brain damaged. 
I was like smiling. I did this to make sure the blood would like go down my face, you know, for dramatic effect for like the camera. There wasn't a camera, but I wanted like I wanted it to be like a, a spectacle, you know. I was really milking it a lot. A theater kid, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I got eight stitches. I'm pretty sure the skee ball machine went off too. Hold on. Do you guys know that so that sound the skee ball machine makes when nobody plays it? Hold on. POV and a, a 10 year old just busted his fucking head open and is bleeding all over the roller rink. Summer after 8th grade, I went on a date with a girl who I didn't really have a crush on, but I was an uh, idiot and she was into me. Sure. Except the date was a movie after my tennis practice, so. Dunkirk? You went to go see Dunkirk? On an 8th grade date? Ended up having time to think and decided to just leave to get the bus home. Because I wanted to play Overwatch with my friends. Based. The entire bus home. While I was explaining why <laughs> I couldn't go on a date with her, I was just thinking about how to hit sick clips as Tracer. An actual 8th grade brain. There's nothing wrong with this. Uh, I'm a big fan of this, of this thought process. This is what you should be doing, bro. You should be gaming. Teenagers are so horny, dude. Not this one, apparently. <laughs> this teenager is so unhorny, he wanted to go see Dunkirk. To this day, the events of this incident still baffle me. Oh, God. What was I trying to do? Nobody has the answer. You're really setting this up. My mom says she got a call from the principal when I was in second grade. All right. Asking to come pick me up because I got in trouble. What'd you do? When she got there, the principal explained that at lunch hour, I was running around the room grabbing people's metal spoons, bending them in front of their face and laughing at them. Oh my god. You were the spoon kid. We all had a spoon kid, huh? Right, chat? Everybody can relate to that. This happened six times before <laughs> a teacher noticed and took me to the principal's office. The teacher definitely saw you the first three times, but they're like, oh, he'll tire himself out. I can't believe she let you get up to six. That's lost property for the school. Apparently, one kid had a loose tooth because I yanked the spoon from his mouth. Oh, my God, dude. Oh, my God. This was, this was an innocent, innocuous little story until you committed assault. I thought you were like the normal, everyday spoon kid, but no, this is a step above. This is fucked up. God, my spoon kid was never like this. What was wrong with me? I don't know. I don't know. That's that's a very strange thing to do. At college, we have this Facebook page where people would post anonymous love letters. Cute! Because it was the first year, a lot of the love letters would have no name and be about how nice a person looks. Okay. I was the only person in Missed my civil and cohort to have brown skin, a beard, and green eyes. Ooh. One time, my you friends sound told handsome. me in a letter that said, To the Indian guy who is doing civiling, you have the most beautiful green eyes. Okay. P.S. Stop trying to grow a beard. <laughs> because. That's funny. That's funny. They were just looking out for you. I was so taken aback by someone <laughs> confessing to me for the first time and not knowing Got how to take a compliment. I wrote, I'm not Indian XD and hit enter. With the XD too? It wasn't until I read the comments under the post that it was actually about this Indian ah, guy in his second year cohort. Okay. Other people realized too and mm. I, of course, got clowned in the replies. Oh, that's It's tough. not so bad, but it became a meme where the next <laughs> few love letter posts would have people commenting, I'm not Indian XD, or oh. I am Indian, crying. You shouldn't have told this story. I feel like chat might start doing this now. I think chat might- I don't know what application it would have, but chat might be pretty inventive with this one. You should not have told us this. That's a good story. This is a good one because the stakes are low, but you know that you fucked up and everybody knows who you are now and they're all laughing at you. There was this one freshman in high school who was always playing on his Nintendo 3DS. Okay. He was in one of my classes and was showing the girl sitting next to him his Pokemon collection. He showed her the Pokemon Gardevoir and said, Yay, Gardevoir is pretty hot, isn't she? Ooh. Ooh. That's pretty bad. We're only halfway through the story, though, so buckle up. 
There's all kinds of things on the internet about her. Okay. The classroom was also dead silent ah! at the time, so everyone heard him. Oh! I needed to excuse myself <laughs> to the bathroom as I couldn't control my laughter. Oh my god. No way, I believe you. A lot of people are gonna be like, oh, that didn't really happen. I absolutely believe you. That kid was trying to bond. That kid leaned over and said, check out this hot Pokemon. You should search for her on Google. Do you think that kid feels any shame? Do you think he feels bad about it? Like the kid that said that. I feel like if you if you said that, I don't know if you have the capacity for human shame, right? A few years ago, early in high school, I was invited to one of my friend's birthday parties. Cool. Me and my Fun. girlfriend at the time went together. Uh-huh. For some godforsaken reason, I was so down bad for this girl, I allowed her to convince me that the Elwa Please stuff was oh, cute. Oh, man. Close to the end of the party, she asked for a picture with me. Mm -hmm. And then said we should strike the pose of the time. Oh, the one with no. your fingers and feet pointed together. Oh, no. Oh, my God. There's photo evidence of you doing this? This picture was just meant to be a little joke for us. Oh. At least it was until she posted it. Oh. Now even years later this pose haunts me <laughs> as my friends constantly post it and show it to everyone I could ever interact with. I am forever known as the Awa guy. They show it to everybody? Everybody you could ever interact with? They're just, hey, you like that guy, huh? He's pretty cool. Check out this fucking picture. Just throw it at them. Oh, that's a bad one. Fuck. And that wasn't that long ago. That's only a few years ago. So you have your entire life ahead of you being the uwu guy. When I was around four or five, I thought the word lesbian meant a large <laughs> group of women. What a way to start this one. What a way to kick it off. I like that. Like a herd? A murder of lesbians. Anyways, I went out to the mall with my family and uh -huh. I happened to notice a women's clothing store that had a line full of women waiting to get in. Okay. For all honesty, I have no why I did what I did after, but okay. I yelled at the top of my lungs, damn. Look at all those lesbians. My dad was really close to losing his shit and my mom had to take me aside to explain what the actual <laughs> meaning was. <laughs> For you all said, damn, the first, you were four or five years old and you said, damn, that's how you start the sentence. Damn, look at all those lesbians. God damn. I still get really embarrassed remembering it to this day. Oh, dude, that's a good story. That's a good, that's, that's winning tonight. This is the story of the night already. When I was a kid, I used to go on road trips with my parents all the time. Being a tiny bastard with a small bladder, I okay. often have to go to the bathroom even with a gas station nowhere inside. Oh, you could just pee on my the side of the road, My dad would right? always stop yeah. the car and tell me to pee on a tree. Mm. In my tiny child mind, this meant that any tree was a bathroom. Okay. This is the setup. One day while my parents were hanging out with their friends in front of church, I had to go to the bathroom. Okay. There were some tiny decorational potter trees in the middle of the gathering. No! I fell to the piss welling up, and instead of going inside to use a urinal like a regular human being, I saw this in tiny the middle of tree the room? in front of everyone and said that'll do. Pulled my pants down in front of everyone, and just let it rip on this tiny decorational tree. <laughs> <laughs> they let you finish? Just imagine everybody standing around after church and you just pee on a tree in the middle of the room and everybody's just like, damn, that kid's weird. Seven-year-old me was not very intelligent. No seven-year-old is. This isn't your fault. The problem with being a parent is that you just forget to tell people. Like, like you, there is so much knowledge that you just take for granted and kids are so stupid and they don't know a fucking thing. Back when I was a sophomore, I met this new girl that I wasn't like super interested okay. in personality wise. But as a teenager, I would take what I could True. get. We had been going out for about a month or so at the point of this happening, uh -huh. for reference. One day, my mom asks me to read a Facebook post from God knows who about their daughter who had recently moved to our city to see if I knew her as we were around the same age. Okay. Turns out we did. It was the girl I was seeing. Uh-huh. How does this end? Turns out she was my cousin. Ah! <laughs> oh, 
no! Oh no! <laughs> hey, this is legal in some places, brother. I'll take what I can get. Oh god, yeah. That's horrifying on a rewatch. That I'll take what I can get line totally changes context when you watch the, the story for the second time. It's my wedding day, and we are about... <laughs> Congratulations. And we are about ready to read our vows to each other. Cool. She says her part beautifully. I'm confident in what I'm about to say, and feel so good in that moment. Uh-huh. She hands me over the microphone, and I immediately dropped it. Uh-huh. I go to pick it up, and once I'm ready to speak, my mind goes blank. Ooh. I forget everything. <sighs> First thing that everyone hears oh, me say no. is not with me. Shit. I turn red. I'm sweating. Oh, man. Why did I say that? I'm nervous and try to find what I wrote. Oh, and you're I wedding. speed through my path as fast as possible for this moment to be over. Oh. Anyways, I am planning to have another wedding in the future <laughs> for redemption. Because she did not deserve that. Oh, that's sad. But also kind of cute, right? Who cares? It's fine. But also kind of sad. I, uh, I have a story for this. At my wedding, um, they do the whole lawfully wedded thing. And they make you repeat them. And I was repeating what he said. He says, lawfully wedded wife. And I say, waffly wedded wife. And everybody starts laughing. And I'm just like, Ugh. I hate that. I hate it when people laugh when, like, you mean to say a word and then you just get two words mixed up. I fucking hate that. But to this day, her family will still be like, are you two still waffly wed? It's so annoying. I have to be nice about it, but I fucking hate that. When I was in the first grade, <laughs> I thought I could beatbox the Super Mario Bros. theme really well. Excellent opener. Great. I thought I could beatbox the Super Mario Bros. theme really well. I could not. My elementary school had a talent show, <laughs> and I decided to sign up with my beatbox. Oh, theme. hell yeah! When I got on stage for the auditions and was handed the mic, I looked out at the judges and stared in a frozen panic. Eventually, I ran off the stage crying. I didn't even start beatboxing. Oh, no! Talent shows are fucked up, man. Talent shows are terrifying. Poor kids. Me as a preteen only had private internet <laughs> access on the YU. I remember I took it into the bathroom to watch hot sexy girls typed into the YouTube search when I heard my sisters laughing downstairs. The YU was connected to the TV still. Oh, my God. Oh my god! <laughs> your family member... Your, fa your family member takes the Wii U and goes into the bathroom and you can see what they're doing on the family TV. Okay, okay, you're the sisters. And you just see slowly across the screen, hot... S E X <laughs> With creeping horror you see the letters slowly filling <laughs> in the search bar. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Thank god they came out with the switch, bro. Saved a lot of lives with that one. Two things you need to know is the time of furry on Google Drive has previewed. Hey, thanks for the cringe. I, I already like you've already painted a picture. I was in college in my freshman year and I looked at a furry commission sheet through Google Docs. Okay. The next day I had a group Oh no! I thought I had deleted the commission sheet from my history before class, but it was still there Ooh. when I got that. Of course only I could access the presentation. I had to scroll through my Google Drive oh. account, past what was furry body below art in the preview, on the big smart board in front of 30 people, to open the presentation. Oh my god, that's bad. That's really bad. They definitely saw and they didn't say anything because that only makes it more awkward. And now you're like, did they see? And they're thinking, does he know that we saw? And now you're both doing this dance where it's like you both pretend that you don't know, but you both know. Oh, that's fucked up. I don't actually remember this. Damn, my this mom is like only premium. told me about this after the fact several years later. We were out at a local festival, and there was this man walking his dog. Okay. I, being a four-year-old, wanted to pet the dog. Mm -hmm. So I go up to the guy, 
ask him if I could pet his dog and we start talking. Okay. I end up telling him that my previous dog had died and that if I ever got a new dog I would name him Fuckles. Fuckles? The man was rightly very confused. I thought he had misheard me, so I drew out <laughs> the syllables so he could clearly understand me. Fuckles. My mom said she'd never oh. speed walk so fast after yanking me away from that man's dog. Oh, yeah. Fuckles! <laughs> Just a four-year-old. I was on a city bus on the way home from school and noticed a girl wearing a parappa the rapper t-shirt. Oh, shit! What a cool girl! Oh, my God! Not true. I already don't think this is true. Yeah. I already don't believe you. I, I think that's the cringe. This is not a parappa shirt. This is not a Parappa shirt at all, it's just a dog. When I walked by her, I pointed at the shirt and excitedly said, you gotta believe. She looked me with the most blank expression I have ever seen and said, what the fuck are you talking about? And I just got off the bus at the next stop because ah! I was so embarrassed. <laughs> it was a Parappa shirt, but she didn't know who he was! Oh no. She's a poser. I guess it's just like a 17-year-old a, a, a wearing a Nirvana shirt. And you're like, name one song. And they can't, I guess. But why Parappa? Fake fan. I was in marching band in high school. Uh-huh. We were doing a performance at the local cemetery as part of a Memorial Day service. Afterwards, we were just hanging out and chatting. Cool. And our drum major says she's going to go visit her grandfather. I assumed she meant that he was present at the service, so I jokingly asked her, oh, are you going digging? She looks at me with bewildered hurt look on her face and just says yes and leaves. Her grandfather was buried at that cemetery and she was visiting his grave. <laughs> Honestly, a very sharp response from you. That's very funny. You thought of that immediately. I wouldn't even feel bad about that. That's funny. Like, if she wasn't, like... If, she, if, if her grandfather wasn't dead, that is an excellent line. You just flipped a coin and it came up tails. That's all that happened there. For some background for this story, I'm originally from Indiana. I'm sorry. One of the girls in my class was from Illinois, and we very vaguely bonded over that. Okay. One day, my teacher brought up the Middle East because we were talking about geography or whatever. Uh huh. I rose my hand and stood up and instantly blurted out this girl and I are both from the Middle East. I'm from Indiana, <laughs> and then sat back down. Literally no one reacted, not even the teacher, and everything carried on. The icing on the cake is that I was so full of myself as a kid that I was dead set convinced that this girl had a crush on me that entire year, because we were both from bumfuck nowhere in the Midwest. Oh my god, that's a great one. That's a good one. That's a good one. You, you got Dona walled by an entire class and the teacher, you, nobody even reacted or batted an eye, and then you went on thinking that you guys were going to be together. That's an excellent story. I talk to myself a lot. Okay. Like if I'm cooking, I'll go for <laughs> Gordon Ramsay and be like, let's add some time in there or something. Be honest. You guys do this same? Really? If I'm really mad, I'll say shit. Some, like if I'm really mad or annoyed, I'm like, ah. I like make noises like a caveman. And I think I've done it sometimes during work calls when I'm really annoyed with somebody. And I'm pretty sure I'm muted, but not always. One day I had a Zoom lecture for you. Aha! Aha! Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> not knowing this, I entered a Zoom room with 20 plus people and said to myself, <laughs> man, I got to take a wicked dump and started singing the Gaston theme. <laughs> Why Gaston? They all heard me go, no one shits like Gaston. Are you hyping yourself up on the toilet? Are you hyping yourself up on the... No. What? No, wait a minute. It's not even hyping yourself up. You're hyping up another man. What kind of beta male shit is this? You're inspired by another man's poops. This is LeFou. I think LeFou wrote in. <laughs> this is a LeFou moment. Thanks for sticking around on another episode of Cringe Confessional. And we'll see you next time. I don't know when we're going to do this again. I don't know. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to subscribe, like, comment. What was your favorite story? Tell me below. Not much pooping tonight. Pretty clean night, all things considered. Please keep submitting at cringe.coney.gg, sending your stories of the worst thing that's ever happened to you, and who knows, maybe you could make it on the Cringe Confessional. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. 
Bye! Bye!